worshiping today in our meeting house and online via our live stream. And as always, it's our joy to welcome anybody who's visiting us for the first, second, or third time. And we are so glad that you're here with us today on Christmas Day. First Church is an open, welcome, and affirming congregation of the United Church of Christ, which means that no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. Part of our welcome of all people is acknowledging diverse physical needs, so if you are in need of sound amplification or a large fridge bulletin, please talk to our ushers and they can help you out this morning. I'm getting a look like maybe we're out of large fridge bulletins. We'll make sure to get more for next week. Also, it's helpful for us to know who's here, if you can sign your pew pads this morning in the pews and pass those along. And after the service, we invite everyone to stay for a few minutes of fellowship in Schultz Hall with some refreshments. Friends, this is the part of the announcements where I usually tell you about all the busy things happening at First Church. But this week, in particular, it's actually kind of a quiet week. Your First Church staff has been hard at work over the last few days, making sure that everything happened for Christmas. And so on Monday, the church office will be closed. And then for the rest of the week, the church office is open 9 to 1. The office is also closed for New Year's Day on January 2nd. Next week, Sunday worship happens on New Year's Day. We'll just have one service at 10 o'clock. And we hope to see many of you there if you haven't stayed up late into the night partying and welcoming in 2023. And a uh, little pop quiz for you. Who do we think works the hardest on Christmas at church? Any guesses who puts in the most time? It's not me. I mean, <laughs> that's very nice. We have the correct answer. The music director is the person that puts in the most hours at any church. The Angela was here for three services last night. She's here again this morning. Um, and no rest for the weary. We're going to use her a lot, so there's a lot of music in today's service. So, Angela, thank you for being here. For all of us, I hope you brought your singing voices because our choir is at home resting after a bunch of services last night. Today is a day to be merry, my friends. Christmas is here. Christ is born in a manger in Bethlehem. So let us worship a good and gracious God. I'd invite all who are able to rise in body and in spirit for our call to worship. This morning, we have come to celebrate the good news of great joy. Glory to God in the highest. Unto us is born a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. Glory to God in the highest. A multitude of the heavenly host appeared, praising God. Glory to God in the highest. Let us worship God.
gracious God, open our hearts and minds so we may hear once again the angel's song and know that Christ is born for us and for all. Touch the world with joy this holy day and fill us with peace and childlike delight. Surprise us and bless us with the simple miracle of the birth of the Christ child. And it is in his blessed name that we now pray together. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Please be seated. Today, we light the Christ candle, an event which we have not only anticipated during the past four weeks, but which people of old look forward to as well. They all foresaw a day when one would come who would deliver his people. They knew that someday what had been promised to them Joseph heard the news this way. Matthew, chapter 1, verse 23 through 23. An angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus. For all he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. Today we relight the Advent candles to remember the light which has come into the world of which men and women of old foretold. We remember Abraham who lived by faith, Ruth, a pilgrim in a strange land, David, whose kingdom was established forever, and Isaiah, whose writing proclaimed the coming of Emmanuel. We now light the Christ candle, rejoicing in the Christ who, at Bethlehem, came to us on a starry night 3,000 years ago. As a fulfillment of the voice of ancient seers and prophets, let us pray together. God of all creation, we thank you for your great mystery of the creation of your Son, Jesus, as the perfect love of man, as the light of today, as the light of the established truth in time of life. We rejoice in the coming of the one who all the heavens. May the Christ of burned out all the wick on Christmas Eve. Oh, yeah. It's very faint. It's faint, but we're going. children might be currently in a, a stocking-induced coma right now. <laughs> so um, I would love to welcome forward anybody who's feeling young at heart that might like to take part in a Christmas time for children of all ages this morning. Is there anybody that would like to come forward? Still in the 
stairs. I know sometimes it's hard to get back up after you've sat down. <laughs> yeah, you do. <laughs> so I have here um, a Christmas present, and this is actually for a game called Pass the Parcel, which maybe you've played before. It's a little bit like musical chairs. We're going to ask Angela in a minute to, to sort of play us some Christmas music. Um, and we'll pass the parcel around back and forth. And whenever the music stops, you get to open up this Christmas present. Um, but it's not a surprise. I'm actually going to tell you what's inside here. It's another present. There's about four presents wrapped up in here. So you got to be careful when you open it not to take too much paper off. Because underneath there's yet more paper. Um, and at each level, there's also a little prize as well as a Christmas challenge. Okay? Something you have to do. Some task you have to do. So, any questions about that? No? Aren't you glad you volunteered? Yeah. <laughs> Angela, will you play us a little Christmas music? And maybe we can go in a circle here and pass this around. Angela, will you play us some Christmas music? See, I was well trained in the art of present wrapping. <laughs> I'll take that, yep. So you get a little candy prize there. But there's also a Christmas challenge. Play us some Christmas music. I think there's a challenge in there too, right? Yes, I have it right in my hand. Sing happy birthday. Sing happy birthday to Jesus loudly. <laughs> you want the microphone? I think they can help, right? You can help, right? I'm very good at pronunciation, so I can blow you away. <laughs> can we get a little happy birthday music, Angela? I'm not going to let you all in the congregation off the hook, though. I'm going to start passing this parcel around through the congregation here. So, Angela, can we get some more passing music? Let's go ahead and just send that around to the person next to you. We can toss it. There's nothing breakable in there.
I don't think there's any more singing ones in there. You're in luck. Hug a family member friend. Oh, beautiful. All right, Angela, we got one more layer to this thing. You ready? All right, let's keep passing it. There's a manger ornament, yep, made by one of our kids here at church school. Jesus is born. Amen. Merry Christmas, everybody. And thank you so much. And will our um, children at heart help me cast the piece this morning? We're going to stand up and tell the congregation the good news of God's love be with you. Are you ready? No, I need help. Okay, well, <laughs> one, two, three. May the good news of God's love be with you. Let us pass the peace. Please be seated. Please be seated. I'll be reading from Isaiah chapter 9, verses 2 through 7. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onwards and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this.
be seated. The next reading is from Luke chapter 2, verses 4 through 15. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David, a savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those who he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. join me in a spirit of prayer. God of Christmas and giver of the Christ child, we come to you on this wondrous day to gather in praise and to lift up your name with friend, with family, with neighbor, and yes, with stranger. In the beginning, your creative work began with a word, and today on Christmas, your creation continues with the word made flesh. On this holiest of days, we join the everlasting chorus saying, Glory to God on high, and great is your name in all the earth. Like Mary, we ponder these things in our hearts. We wonder how you could love us so much to actually become Emmanuel, one of us, one with us. We remember the stories that remind us of your steadfast love, that affirm that you have never and will never give up on your children. Thank you for your continual presence in our lives. And yet, even on this day on which we celebrate the fulfillment of love, we recognize that there are many still waiting for that fulfillment. The fulfillment of adequate food and shelter, the fulfillment of peace and an end to violence, the fulfillment of reprieve, 
from the fierce grip of grief. The fulfillment of a restoration of a broken relationship, the fulfillment of a renewed heart or mind or body, the fulfillment of healing from illness, the fulfillment of an end to addiction and bodily abuse. Giving God, give us the courage to do your work in this world and to share the peace coming to us in the manger this day. We pray today especially for those who have traveled to be here, for all those who have lost loved ones in the past year, for those who struggle with mental illness, for those who fight against alcoholism, for those traveling in the coming days and weeks, for those who have to work on Christmas, especially for those who work to keep us healthy and safe while most of us are celebrating. We pray for those who cannot make it home for Christmas. We pray for those with no home to go to, with no one to love them. Hear this prayer, O oh God. In all that we do and all that we are, God, send your spirit to us and then send us forward with the majesty of Christmas to share the grace we are given with everyone we encounter. Bless us this Christmas day, O Lord. Amen. Today it's really up, down, up, down, up, down, isn't it? <laughs> Working off some of that stocking stuff. <laughs> Merry Christmas, everybody. What is this Christmas thing that we celebrate? What is the purpose to all of it? I thought for today's sermon, I might collect some of the wise words of other people to reflect on the meaning of Christmas. The humorist Andy Borowitz described Christmas this way. He said, Christmas is a baby shower that went totally overboard. <laughs> and perhaps that's true. I've never been to a baby shower where wise men came from foreign nations. Nobody brought a donkey or a drummer boy. Maybe we've taken this whole thing a little far. An anonymous person once said, Christmas is the only time of year you can sit in front of a dead tree eating candy out of a sock. I guess that's another way to think about Christmas. Anybody had some candy out of their stocking yet this morning? Yeah, I see some hands out there. You know who you are. <laughs> of course, if there's one thing that people get excited about, children get really excited about at Christmas time, what is it? Presents, yes, presents. We get really into presents. Food, too, though. But we get really into presents at Christmas time, don't we? And it's a beautiful thing to be able to give gifts and to receive gifts. Milton Berle said, There's a lot of things that money can't buy. Not a single one of them is on my son's Christmas list. <laughs> and the comedian Anthony Jeselnik talked about Christmas this way. He said, This past Christmas, I told my girlfriend for months in advance that all I wanted was an Xbox. 
That's it. Beginning and end of the list. Xbox. And do you know what she got me? She got me a homemade frame with a picture of our first date together. Which was fine, because I got her an Xbox. <laughs> of course, not every present is a fun toy or a game. We know that as we get older, sometimes the things we look forward to most are socks, underwear, Christmas sweaters. Ken Hubbard said, nothing's quite as mean as giving a little child something useful for Christmas. It's true, it doesn't have quite the same appeal as a Lego set, does it? When I think of First Church, this quote comes to mind. Douglas Coupland said, handmade presents are scary because they reveal you have a little too much free time. We know that around here, if we think you have some free time, we might ask you to join a board or committee, right? Try to do a little good for this world. I know some of you out there have experienced that. Andy Rooney said one of the most glorious messes in the world is the mess created in the living room on Christmas Day. So don't clean it up too quickly. The joy of being together with the people you love and celebrating gifts shared among each other, truly beautiful. Maybe he said even more poignantly by Bobby, age seven, he said, love is what's in the room with you at Christmas if you stop opening presents and you listen. So when we gather together with the people we love and we share our time together, we are truly touching the meaning of Christmas, the meaning of the Christ child. Christmas is a time for family, the family of blood and the chosen family, people that we truly enjoy spending time with. Of course, not every family is a beautiful, idyllic family. George Burns said, happiness is having a large, loving, caring, close-knit family that lives in another city. <laughs> I guess it's true. Distance makes the heart grow fonder. And Pope John the 23rd said this, mankind is a great and immense family. This is proved by what we feel in our hearts at Christmas. So spending Christmas with family doesn't have to be about the people with whom you share lineage. It can be about the church community. It can be about neighbors and friends. It can be about spending time in service in this Christmas season. Wherever you find a sense of family and love and belonging, I hope that you spend your Christmas doing that. And Christmas is a time for love. Max Lucado, the children's author, said the story of Christmas is the story of God's relentless love for us. We hear that in the gift of the Christmas child, that God loved us so much that God's Son was sent to earth in human form to live with us, to walk with us, to teach us, and to love us. Edna Ferber said Christmas isn't a season, it's a feeling. It's something that you hold in here. And it's true, we feel that at Christmas time. The world feels a little bit different, maybe a little bit kinder, a little bit nicer, a little bit softer. Christian educator and author Frank McKibben said, Christmas is a gift of love wrapped in human flesh, tied securely with the strong promises of God. It is more than words can tell, for it is a matter of the heart to receive, to believe, and to understand. Perhaps there are no words that truly express all that Christmas is. But if I was to say there was one person who came close, it might be the comedian Bill Murray. Comedians have such a gift for reflecting the world back to us, don't they? Bill Murray said, it's Christmas Eve. It's the one night of year where we all act a little nicer. We smile a little easier. We cheer a little more. For a couple of hours out of the whole year, we are the people that we always hoped we would be. Being those people is a matter of choosing to be those people, and we are indeed a Christmas people. So whoever it is that you hoped that you would be, a little nicer, a little kinder, a little more giving, a little easier on yourself or on others, I invite you to be that person this Christmas.
to hold that Christmas feeling all year long in your heart and to share it with others. Let that be your Christmas gift to the world. Amen. We believe in the eternal deity. In whose mind was born the plan of salvation, in whose heart was born the love of our man. We believe in the incarnate deity. Born in a humble stable, amid the glowing animals, the light in darkness, the promise of hope to the world. We believe in the inspiring deity. Before Bethlehem, at Bethlehem, beyond Bethlehem. Forever, the world without end. Amen.
ask you to join me in the benediction and the commissioning. Inspired by the words of Howard Thurman. When the song of the angels is stilled, When the kings and princes are home, the work of Christmas begins to heal the broken, to release the prisoner, to bring peace among the people.